Hello out there. We're on the air. Welcome back, everybody. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. What else can I say? Happy April the 17th. Good to see you, everybody. Hopefully everything's working here. Bit of a shit show this morning, as expected on a Wednesday. Wednesdays are just my kryptonite in the in the world. I don't know why. Uh, I am on Arnie duty this morning. And of course, every time you take him out there, normal situations, uh, he pees, he does whatever he needs to do, and he comes right back in the house within 30 seconds. Very good. <laughs> then all of a sudden, when, he, when you're in a rush to do something or you need to be somewhere, he will do everything except that for the first five minutes out there. So there's a new... It's spring here. If you noticed, I changed my thumbnail for the first time this morning. It is officially spring. I don't know when the actual day of that is, but it feels like it today. It's not very nice, but all the snow is gone. So with that comes all the birds. And Arnie is a big bird chaser himself. So I also saw <laughs> out there, I saw about eight robins in, uh, eight robins in the yard this morning. And... They're not going to be there very long because last time, last year at this time, I just kind of let them settle in. But there was this one Robin for probably a month, all day. He would just slam into the windows over and over and over and over again and loud too. And just made an absolute mess of the windows, all of them. The whole house is like, there's windows in every part of the house, I guess like most houses, but this, I don't know, it's weird. But he was, he'd go over here, he'd sit on the deck, go out the window, go on the other side of the house, sit on the deck, slam into the window over and over and over again, all day. It was the most annoying thing I've ever experienced before. I think it's because he saw his reflection in the windows. And so he thought that he was protecting his territory by attacking the windows, attacking himself. So it was insane. So the plan after today's show is I'm going to take Arnie out there and just let him loose. Maybe scare them off. I don't know what else to do. If anybody in the chat, holy cow. A lot of people in the chat this morning. Lots of comments. If anybody in the chat or watching this later, leave a comment. But what do I do with Robins? Like, I don't really want to just kill them. That seems like the most logical thing to do. But I don't know. I like Robins. So if you, have any, if you have any ideas what I can do to stop this idiot, hopefully he's not back again this year, this male Robin who kept slamming into my windows, let me know. I would much appreciate that. Johnny's here. Carl's here. Good to see you, fellas. Jason's here. Good morning. AD is in the house. Tommy D. Letha D. Holy, lots of Ds in the house. <laughs> And then we got Crypto Heathen and Mav over in uh, Zaptot stream. Morning, fellas. Uh, Crypto Heathen says, also loving the spring here. 82 degrees, everything green. It's got the Blue Jays and Cardinals all around. The hummingbirds will be back soon. It is a great time of the year. It's a little bit um, gross, honestly, when the snow melts here because it's all moldy and yellow. But... It rained all day yesterday. It's supposed to rain all day today. And usually I don't love rain, but in this case, it wipes everything away. And we got that clean, fresh spring air. Anyways, today is going to be a bit of a different show. Yesterday was a different show. Today is going to be a different show. I mean, when you do a show every day, it's hard to just do the same thing over and over again. So this one's going to be a little bit different today. You can see the title is called Bitcoin Changed My Life. Bitcoin Changed My Life. And there's a couple inspirations for this, just watching a few different podcasts, listening to a few different things, and having a bit of self-reflection, I guess. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I don't have any sort of script. I don't have any sort of notes. We're not going to run through the metrics today because the point of this, the point of today, is mostly just to explain my journey, I guess, to get here, uh, what, how I got here. And how, how much things have changed for me. And none of it has to do with price at all. So I, I kind of wanted to just leave that part out of the show today and focus on other things. 
Um, and then we got a really special uh, part two of the show today where we're going to be jumping over to living in the future. And I think that I do have some notes for that one. So I think that's going to be the best one yet. There are lots of people over there already. I think we're close to 40 people over on living in the future. And there's a lot of people who are very hungry to do something in Bitcoin. We have such a, a unique opportunity right now in the world. And Bitcoin's a big part of that. And this opportunity is not going to be here forever. And the better you can set yourself up today for what's coming, the better off the rest of your life is going to be. So I got, I don't even want to give it away here, but I got some good information to share on living in the future today, just in terms of how to, how to capitalize on this, how to take advantage of this very short time frame that we have here and start, uh, start changing things in your life into Bitcoin. So Craig is over in zap.stream as well. Shout out to Zap Touch Stream and the people who are over there. <clears throat> if you are, <clears throat> oh, don't speak when you got coffee in your mouth. <laughs> Window decorations, yeah. It, it's not the kind of decorations you want. It was just a bunch of claw marks and then shit all over the railings across the deck. So pretty much my nightmare. And it was just so annoying. It's trying to, trying to work. And this dumb robin just keeps slamming into the window over and over and over again so let's kick things off here i do want to usually we do the metrics then we do the daily block reward today i want to give a, a shout out and this wasn't a comment or a zap or anything it was an email i got yesterday and it was it was from a fellow in ireland believe it or not i guess he's been watching the show since we started here he leaves comments every once in a while very good guy but he's from Ireland and he's, uh, I don't want to give too much away. I don't want to dox him, but he shared his story with me and he said, he's been watching the channel. He's been inspired to do some things. He wants to help with our jets and media company that we got going, which is still in the early days, but we're already earning some Bitcoin with it. And he, he talked about, he said that he had a job, he works nights as a security. And so he has about, you know, during that time, during a night shift, security you have quite a bit of free time so he wants to start doing helping us with that and i i just wanted to share that because you know we focus a lot of our our time and and, and focus on canada here and the us but there's people in living in the future from sweden from ireland from the uk from the states from canada everywhere just bitcoiners talking bitcoin sharing things on bitcoin and so it was a really nice email to receive. And I think that there's a lot of people in his exact scenario in terms of you have a job, whether it's a night shift and you have some free time during that job. And, you know, it, it's unfortunate that a lot of people in those type of jobs just spend the whole time doom scrolling or scrolling Instagram or TikTok and just completely wasting their time when they could be taking advantage of those hours, essentially double dipping. You're doing your security job but you're also doing something on the side productive. And so in this case, he's going to be helping us. He's going to be reaching out to other channels. And so that is the daily block reward from our, our buddy in Ireland. So with that, uh, just quickly on the daily block reward, it's something that we started doing this week on the show. Every morning we talk about a comment, uh, a zap, whatever it is, an email, something positive or constructive. So what I want to what I want to ask you today is check out the Fountain app. And there was an episode I watched yesterday on what Bitcoin did, probably the most famous Bitcoin channel out there for most people. I don't love Peter, honestly. Get weird vibes from him. But he asked a lot of good questions. He has a lot of good guests on the show. And yesterday was Oscar from Fountain. So pretty cool story. <laughs> I've been on I've been on Fountain for about a year now. Every day I just turn on a podcast, earn some free sats. That's part of their attraction to bring people on the fountain. But they got three people working there. Three Bitcoiners working on fountain, competing with the likes of Spotify, Apple Podcasts. And they're doing things differently. They're offering Bitcoin for people to listen. People, uh, Companies can sponsor the podcasts and they basically pay out sats to people who listen to them. But then you can also send... Uh, Boosts, I think they're called on there. 
So if you listen to a podcast, you've been get a lot, getting a lot of information, value from a podcast, you can actually send them Bitcoin, sats, 100 sats, 1,000 sats, a million sats. And with that, you can leave a little message. And so that's what I'm going to be prioritizing on the daily block reward every morning is the fountain. And if there's nothing from there, we'll go to YouTube or an email, whatever that is. So that's my ask of you today is to check out the fountain app. I'm going to do a little bit of a contest here in the next couple of weeks in terms of clips on fountain. So what I would suggest is get set up now, get a profile and start earning some sats on there. And then in a couple of weeks time, we're going to do a fountain contest for listeners of the show. I think it'll be pretty cool. So three people work in there in fountain. Oscar is one of them. And I was having some trouble when I first got on the fountain. It was very buggy when I first started on fountain. It was the early days and it still is. But I sent them an email and it was, uh, it was Oscar that replied to me. So I guess that's what happens when you got three people running a, a company like fountain. So that's pretty cool. Get on the fountain, set up a profile, connect it to your lightning address. It's easy to fund your wallet. It's easy to withdraw sats that you've earned on there. And it's an absolute no brainer. Anything that you can be doing at this time in history to earn sats, uh, whether that's through work or through listening to podcasts, you should absolutely be doing that. And, and as we go along here, as time moves on and Bitcoin continues to go up in value, um, those, those rewards are going to go away. 10 years ago, you could have hopped onto a website, Bitcoin faucet. And just for typing in your visiting the website, typing in your Bitcoin address, they would send you five Bitcoin 10 years ago. And so we're living through that right now in 10 years from now, we're going to look back on today and say, we could have earned 60 sats every day just for listening to a podcast. So that's how we're that's how we're thinking on this channel. We're not thinking about the dollar terms of anything. And that's kind of how, you know, I want to I want to start the show with that today in terms of the how Bitcoin changed my life. Instead of living in the fiat world, instead of pricing everything in dollars, we got to start thinking in Bitcoin. So uh, Craig says, Jor, why not publish Bitcoin Journey on Fountain? You can get some stats for that. Plus, get more exposure with Bitcoiners. I do actually upload the the show every every day to uh, Anchor, which sends it to Spotify. It sends it to Fountain. So one thing you could do that would, you know, the one thing with Bitcoiners that I've noticed, and this is part of the whole thesis today, but Bitcoiners are very supportive. If they get value, if they get information, if, if something positive happens from them listening to a podcast or a show, they want to give back. They want to give the, the creator something back. And so what you can do for me, you know, I mean, you don't have to go on the fountain and send me a bunch of sats, but just go on there and, and start listening to the show. Even if you don't, even if you listen to it in the morning, turn it on at night, even if you don't listen to it, you can just earn sats by listening to the show. And it helps my numbers, which, you know, I'll, I'll have to use one day for something. Um, but that's, that's my ask today. And if you, if you're feeling generous, if you've been getting anything from the show, if you've been listening for a while now, you can send a boost and a message or a promotion for your business. And I'll read it on the show daily block reward. That's what I want to do. And that's part of the whole jets and media too. We're not taking money from big corporations for a sponsor on the show. We're going to be helping small businesses who are in Bitcoin and getting their business out in front of more Bitcoiners. So there you have it. Zap stream. The daily Bitcoin journey is on there. Rock and rolls in the house. Matt is in the house. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Yan, hello everyone listening while driving home from work. All the way in in Europe. A couple hours ahead of us there. Driving home from work. Most people are driving to work in the in the West. Bodhi, good morning, my friend. <clears throat> okay. So I was going to start with some news. Maybe we maybe we will start with some news. The one thing I did want to show was this. Let's bring this up. So I'm sure most people, if you've been watching the show, have 
seen this news. So Hong Kong is going to be, they approved their ETFs on Monday. I'm not sure on a timeline in, in terms of when people can start buying them there. But I wanted to share this piece of news from Bitcoin News, a sponsor of the show. Big shout out to Bitcoin News uh, for supporting a small YouTube channel. They actually, on that note, yesterday I listened to a really good uh, live stream by Bitcoin News. It was called How to Get a Job in Bitcoin. And it was from, oh, what was the name of the company? Bitcoin Talent Company, I think. Bitcoin Talent Co. So they did about an hour live stream on Twitter titled How to Get a Job in Bitcoin. Some very valuable information on there. I got a lot from it, honestly. And so check that out. It's on their Twitter feed, Bitcoin News. And I think it's pinned at the top. So you can go back and re-listen to that. I was also on my first Twitter spaces yesterday as well. <laughs> So you can go check that out. I don't even know what it is, where it is or anything. Uh, but there, <laughs> I, I was kind of expecting to show up and there'd be like 10 people there, 15 people. But there was like a thousand, I think. A thousand people were listening to this Twitter spaces. And I was on there talking about the Bitcoin journey and real estate stuff. I was only on for about 15 minutes, I think, because I ran my show too long. <laughs> but that's okay. I had a good chat with him after and it sounds like we're going to do some work together in the future. Rick says, more smashing of the like, please. That's a great call. Thank you. Anything you can do always helps. Rick says, you did a great job on the Twitter space. I posted your YouTube link there. On Twitter? Oh, on the, on the post there. Thanks, Rick. Can always count on Rick to be helping out and supporting the channel here. Great guy. Okay, so back to Hong Kong. So let's talk about this. This this uh, piece of news from Bitcoin News says Bloomberg's Eric uh, Eric Balchunas expects Hong Kong Bitcoin ETFs to struggle to hit 500 million. Wow, look at that face! Isn't that a face that you just want to trust, Eric? Et the Bitcoin ETFs are going to struggle to hit 500 million bucks, and the reasons are because Hong Kong's ETF market is just 50 billion and inaccessible to Chinese locals. That's that's fair. We'll, we'll hear them out here. No major issuers like BlackRock. And the fees are projected to be 1% to 2% far, far higher than the U.S. Terror Dome. So let's talk about this dipshit. Eric. Eric, 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 Eric. When are these people going to learn? They said the exact same thing before the Bitcoin ETFs were launched in the US. Oh, they'll probably struggle to hit, maybe for the whole year, they'll hit 5 billion, maybe 10 billion for the year, for 2024. That's what these people like Eric were saying before the American one. So that was in January. It's now April. They expected 5 to 10 billion to flow into Bitcoin for the whole year, 2024. It's been two months, two and a half months since then, or three months, whatever you want to call it. And BlackRock's, BlackRock themselves have $25 billion worth of Bitcoin. $25 billion. So that's 1.5 times more than they expected, or 2.5, I guess, sorry. 2.5 times more than expected. That's just BlackRock, too. There's also Fidelity and seven other issuers in the U.S., but his reasoning here, his reasoning, Hong Kong ETF market is just 50 billion, only 50 billion, and inaccessible to Chinese locals. Okay, so number one, you, you never count on Chinese locals or Canadian locals. We're not the people who move the needle here. It's the institutions, it's the big banks, it's, it's the big money, that's who moves the needle here. Who cares about the Chinese locals? The second one here is that fees are projected to be one one to two percent far far higher than the U.S. Terror Dome. So the reason probably why they're going to be charging fees of one or two percent is because it's a different kind of ETF. The, the ones in the U.S. here, as much as I've you know said that you should be moving your retirement funds from whatever you hold into Bitcoin, the U.S. ETFs are a joke because you buy Bitcoin there. They hold it for you. They hold all the Bitcoin or Coinbase does. And then you can kind of get the price appreciation of Bitcoin. 
But when you go to take that money out, when you go to cash out, they don't give you Bitcoin. They give you cash. And so these Hong Kong ETFs are a much different beast. They're called in-kind ETFs, which means the exact same scenario. You buy the ETF, you get the price appreciation. But when you go to cash out, when you want to take your ETF proceeds out, they send you Bitcoin. And that's kind of a, it's a nightmare in a sense, because, you know, people who are getting into the ETFs, that's kind of their first step into Bitcoin. A lot of this big money, that's their first step. And a lot of people will be doing the same. A lot of people who have money in their retirement funds, they're going to be buying the ETFs. And they're going to be paying attention to Bitcoin for a little while. And then they're going to probably transition into holding Bitcoin, buying Bitcoin themselves and storing it themselves or with their own local bank. But in order to do that, the American ETFs aren't very friendly for that because you have to, you can't just get the Bitcoin. You have to take cash and then buy Bitcoin with it which creates a whole nother slew of issues with that. But at the same time, <clears throat> if you were to get the Hong Kong ETF, and I'm not sure what the accessibility is here for us, but just as a, in general, if you get the Hong Kong ETF, you hold that for a couple of years, you see the price go up, you start paying closer attention to it. And then you want to start buying Bitcoin on your own. You said, I don't, I don't trust Hong Kong. I, I want to take this Bitcoin myself. They'll send you the Bitcoin. You don't have to take cash for it. You probably could take cash for it if you want to, but they'll actually send you the Bitcoin. So that's probably why the fees are one or 2% higher is because it's a whole different dynamic there. And I think that if you're smart, you will be paying instead of 0.2%, you'll be paying 1% of a fee and you'll have an in-kind ETF, which you can actually withdraw the Bitcoin whenever you want to. So this little weasel face here, Eric, 500... I want to bookmark this uh, tweet and this show and find Eric on LinkedIn and, and come back in a year from now and see if uh, Hong Kong's Bitcoin ETFs struggled to hit 500 million. Don't, I mean, if you've been watching the show, you know that we don't put a whole lot of faith and trust and weight into people like Eric. But anyways, Bodhi. Jor, you provide great value, always bringing encouragement and challenging us in a friendly way. Thank you. That's kind of the point of the show. And I talked about that on the Twitter space yesterday. I said, I don't really need to sell Bitcoin to anybody, especially people who watch the show. I mean, you, you get to a point in Bitcoin where you don't need to hear any more sailor talks. You get to a point in Bitcoin where you know what's going to happen here. You cross that line and you understand what's happening here. The the geopolitical side of things, the market side of things, the whole economics and how things are shifting. You get to a point where you don't need people to tell you how good Bitcoin is anymore. This show focuses more on how to set yourself up for, to take advantage of that. Because Bitcoin, and I did have a, I forgot to show it here, and I'm not going to show it on my, on my phone. <laughs> we do a golf podcast every Wednesday night. We're doing one tonight, actually. Uh, but my little brother... He always has things on his phone, like a video picture. And instead of sending it to me before the show and I could bring it up on the screen, he always puts his camera or his phone right in front of the camera and thinks that we can see his video or his picture. So I'm not going to do that. But there was a there was a picture I saw this morning. I wanted to share it. But it, it was just like a little wee block, which was Bitcoin. And then there was bonds, stocks, real estate. And the, the tiny little block there looked like a speck of dust in terms of where we are right now. So the point of that is that Bitcoin's moving from this very, very, very small niche industry, people like us, it's moving into the mainstream. And as that movement happens, as it moves from a niche industry into a mainstream industry, if you have any sort of involvement in that, aside from, you know, ownership of Bitcoin is one thing, but you're not going to be able to live off of that. You can't just buy Bitcoin in 2024 and just expect to live off of that forever. You want to ride that wave. You want to be a part of as many different things as you possibly can, whether that's a business, whether that's a YouTube channel, whatever it is, you uh, you want to be part of that wave. And that's kind of how we're going to tie things back at the end of the show. But that is the point of this channel is not to talk about the price or the charts, but it's to talk about how we can take advantage of the small time or this small window in history. 
<laughs> There's one of our buddies from Ireland, Stephen. Hi, Jor. Painting my bathroom, listening to your show, loving the content, Stephen. Ireland. My man. And Bodhi says, as soon as I'm able to zap, I'll be zapping. So Bodhi, I think, is in the process of getting set up on Noster right now. And Daniel is here as well. Good morning, Daniel. Let's check quickly on the zap stream. A couple people in there, not as lively today, but that's okay. Everything's a transition. Hopefully all the people who are on YouTube this morning will eventually come over to the zap.stream world. Into the new world. Okay, well, we're 25 minutes into this. <laughs> uh, one more shout out I wanted to give, one more shout out, is to Letha. And she's probably maybe in the chat this morning, maybe not. But she purchased some King Golf stuff. And I forgot to email yesterday, so I wanted to give her a on, on air shout out. Uh, we got the hat. I'll be sending it hopefully in the next little while here. But I uh, appreciate that. So with that, let, let's get into this. Let's get into Bitcoin changed my life. How? Why? How do we get here? And the quote I shared on Noster today, and this was a, a Stoic quote, and I, I've been pretty hard on the Stoicism for the last couple of years, and it's really had a big impact on my life and my mood and just my mindset in life. The Stoicism, I think, is a very good um, guide in a lot of ways in terms of controlling the things that you can and letting go of the things that you can't and and putting your attention on the bigger things in life instead of giving so much time and energy to the small bullshit that people spend so much of their day worrying about and so this is a <clears throat> this is a quote from oh who's it from confucius probably i don't know heraclitus <laughs> heraclitus I don't think that's how you pronounce it. I didn't even look at the name before I said that. <laughs> Anyways, here is the here's the quote. I'm not going to say the name again. But the quote is, day by day, what you choose, what you think, and what you do is who you become. So day by day, what you choose, what you think, and what you do is who you become. <laughs> okay, I gotta, I gotta stop from having a little laugh fit here. Okay, shout out to uh, Craig over in Zap.stream. He just zapped 420 shots. Speaking of 420, man, we're what? Two days away from the having. Forgot about that until today. Two days from the having. Uh, so he just sent 420. I don't think we're going to get to the. Um, I don't think we're going to get to f have it on 420 this year, which I thought was like a, almost like a meant to be. Let's check this out. What's that time chain calendar? What's our projected having time now? I got to get away from that name. Start thinking about other things. 830 p.m. Friday night, April 19th. So I don't think it's actually going to, I don't think anything can change it unless everybody shuts off their Bitcoin miners for the next two days. So it looks like April 19th at about 8 o'clock p.m., which means we're going to be doing a show at 8 p.m. Friday night. We're going to have some beers. We're going to have some cheers. And we're going to be watching the new having epoch when it moves from 800 839,999 blocks into the 840,000 block big day so we got to be here for it okay so let's talk about this let's talk about how bitcoin changed my life so i think that there's a lot of people who may, might be new to the show and this was kind of a story that i told early on in my bitcoin journey career uh, and I know that there's a lot of new every day that I'm seeing new faces in the chat here. So I'm hoping maybe that uh, I'm guessing they won't go back and watch all the shows on the channel. So I kind of want to just bring everybody up to speed in terms of how I got here and where, you know, what led me to here. 
So without going too deep into it, uh, I was working a, as an accountant, as a CPA. So I went through college. I went through university. I went through my CPA, which is essentially like the masters of accounting. And so I did all that right out of school. I shouldn't say I took two years off. I coached some hockey. I pumped gas. And then I decided that I didn't want to be waking up at six in the morning to go pump gas in Manitoba anymore when it's minus 50 degrees in January. So I went off to school, did everything you're supposed to, went through college, all that kind of stuff, got my CPA. And I was working at a big accounting firm for just about 10 years, I think nine years. So with that, I mean, I was I was decent at my job. I wasn't uh, outstanding at it. I didn't love it, obviously. It's very hard to love accounting. But it was it was a good paying job. I was decent at it. I liked the people that I worked with. And everything was going as planned. Um, I don't want to get too far into the details here. But with that, when the... I started, we started uh, our golf company, King Golf, in 2019. And I was doing it in the mornings and I was doing it at night. And I was going to my job after the CPA because the CPA program pretty much takes up your whole life, all day, all night. You're working and then you're studying. So once I got out of that, I had all this free time. So I was like, well, I'm going to start a, a golf company. So in the mornings, at night, I do all the, designs i do all the posts i do all the social media stuff and trying to build up this brand so things were going good i mean we weren't uh you know i wasn't living off of king golf stuff but it was fun and i liked doing it and it was earning a little bit more money um i also had a rental house which i talked about last week and why i sold it uh but then everything changed in 2020 and i think a lot of people went through this exact same thing probably a lot of people who are in the chat this morning went through this exact same thing and the whole 2020 thing really changed my life and that led me to Bitcoin. So during that time, the world shut down, we went back to work and then all of a sudden they started rolling out these different initiatives, we'll call them government in initiatives. And by that time between 2020 and 2021, whenever they were starting to roll out all these mandates, Canada was really bad. Manitoba was really bad. But that's when I was looking into things and things weren't making sense in my head. And when things don't make sense, then you start digging a little bit and sniffing around. And so that's when I actually learned what money is. Up until then, I had no idea what money was. None. And that's somebody who went through like finance, accounting. I minored in economics in university. That was my minor, economics. And my dad worked in a bank for 40 years. So I was exposed to a lot of different things within money, but I had no idea how money was made or who printed it and where it came from and what it was backed by. None of that. It's, it's hard to believe that, honestly. It's because that's what they teach in schools. They don't teach you about money they, and they teach you about Keynesian economics. And I still use a lot of it today. Honestly, the, the supply demand still is very relevant, especially in Bitcoin, but I never had a clue what money was. And so then I started digging it around. I started looking into Bitcoin. I actually brought it up to my bosses back in 2021, early 2021 or late 2020. I said, you know, this Bitcoin thing is pretty serious. We should maybe start educating clients on it. We should maybe start talking to businesses, how they can start accepting it. And they, the partners at the firm looked at me like I had three heads. And they're like, yeah, well, there, we have a guy in Toronto he deals with digital assets, cryptocurrencies. We'll put you in touch with him. Never did, obviously. Never, never did. Never had a second thought about it. And so anyways, uh, 2021, I ended up leaving my job because I was forced to work at home by myself in a, in a small office. And it was tough. It was very, very tough because unless you absolutely love what you're doing all day, to be put in an environment like that where you're basically banished from society and separated from all your coworkers and the work that you were doing and the interactions that you got every day from that, it was very tough. And so I just had enough. I said, you know, I don't agree with anything that you guys have done, whether you had to do it or not. I do not agree with anything here. And, you know, without shitting on the firm, they did a lot of good things for me. They helped me a lot with my career. Uh, but there's, it was just a crazy time in the world right there and everybody was caught up in it including them 
And so I, there was just a lot of logic and a lot of common sense missing in my life. And nothing was making sense to me. Nothing. Until I found Bitcoin. And I was actually going to call this episode Bitcoin Saved My Life. But I felt like that was a little bit dramatic. <laughs> so I, I switched it to change my life. But it's the truth. Um, quick break here on that. I got to remember where I was in the story. But Daniel says, uh, are you a Gary V guy, Jor? Believe it or not, Gary V was actually the person who inspired me to start King Golf. I watched all of his shows religiously. I watched all his interviews, especially during COVID. That was something that I watched every single day. And he did a really good job of that. So I owe a lot of my, however I got here, to Gary V for sure. But ever since uh, he got caught up in all the NFTs, Ethereum stuff, I haven't watched a single video. And that's probably not his fault. He probably thought that that was the best play for his business at the time. But he still hasn't come out and said anything about Bitcoin or how bad Ethereum is. So for, and I mean, I get it because his whole business model is tied to the NFTs, the Gary Vee NFTs. But I still think that at some point you just have to come out and be honest with your audience and say like, this isn't what we really had in mind. We're going to switch the strategy. We're going to repay everybody who bought these NFTs and we're going to go in a different direction. But it just seems like he's pretending that none of that's happening right now. So I am a Gary Vee guy. I was, I'm not anymore. But I still like his content. He's, he's got a really good message overall. And I really respect uh, him as a business guy. I just don't love his decision with getting into NFTs and Ethereum. But the, the thing with Gary Vee is that he's a, he's a trailblazer. He's a pioneer in a lot of ways. And so he's always the guy who wants to be in front of everybody, be, you know, get there before everybody else. He, he always talks about underpriced attention with a lot of things. And that's a big thing that I've learned from him is, is finding the underpriced attention. And right now that's Noster. And so, I mean, if, if he were to just come out and say, look, I screwed up, I want to make this right. You know, we're going to change our direction. I would be a hundred percent on board with him, but that's what happens. Sometimes you, sometimes you uh, take a swing, you miss, but it's how you react to that and it's how you adapt from that. So he hasn't adapted the way I, I expected him to. And so he kind of lost, uh, he lost me as a fan. Daniel says he bet on the wrong horse with Ethereum, but his model for social media was spot on. I could not agree more. He, he is absolutely bang on in terms of finding underpriced attention. And right now, and I've been screaming this as loud as I possibly can on this channel, that is Noster. And I know for a fact that there's a good portion of the people who listen to the show every day who have signed up for Noster, who have created an account and who have started to interact on there and build their presence, their reputation on this new internet. So Sachi's in the house. Good morning, my friend. Speaking of Manitoba and how bad it was here, he can attest to that. You might have to watch the show from the start, Sachi, as I've been talking a little bit about Manitoba. So anyways, that's that's where I was. I was in a place, I was isolated from what I love doing or where I love being. Uh, but it, it worked out for the best, honestly. I haven't spent one single day regretting my decision to leave public accounting. Um, Time-wise, I was definitely not in a financial position or King Golf was not in a fi financial position where I should have left. But it was it was something that I had to do for my sanity. And that's why I said it saved my life because I was in a very, very dark spot. I was by myself. Nobody would listen to anything that I wanted to talk about. I couldn't talk to anybody about, you know, what I was looking into, what I was learning, how it relates to what's going on with the 2020 stuff. Nobody would listen. And I didn't have a lot of hope for anything. I saw a very dark future for Canada for myself, for any, my future family. And I, I had zero hope in the world for anything. Everything was just leading down this very dark path of, of control of, you know, the CBDCs, that kind of stuff. And it wasn't until I, I found Bitcoin that things really started changing for me. 
And so that's kind of the message that I want to talk about today is that Bitcoin, people talk about it as a currency, as an investment. Uh, but to me, it's a whole change of your mindset. It's it's it changes your entire life. Once you fully understand the the principles around Bitcoin, it changes every aspect of you. And one of that is the lens that you look through uh, the world with the lens. And so one thing I want to talk about here, just to kind of kick this off, and I think that there's a lot of people who who are kind of traveling down this road right now, but it hasn't fully sunk in yet. And it was actually Bitcoin Ben show that kind of sparked this in my head yesterday. But I've been talking about this for quite a while on the show here. And that is that with fiat. So I left my job. I looked into Bitcoin. I started putting some pieces together, connecting some dots. But with fiat, what the one thing that really clicked for me and that made me say, OK, enough's enough here. I don't want to be part of this anymore, is that with fiat, there's an unlimited amount of it, and we have no idea how much fiat there is out there. And so I, I just want you to really pay attention to what I'm about to say here, because once this clicks with people, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Because our whole life is valued in dollars, and the US dollar is the, the world reserve currency. And so everything's kind of based off of that. But when you understand that we have no idea how much dollars are out there right now, and we have no idea how many dollars will be printed in the future. That makes things impossible to navigate. Impossible. Because when you're when you're valuing anything against the dollar, you have to you need a, a denominator there. You need something that's fixed. And our best estimate of how many US dollars are out there in the world would be nowhere near the actual. Think just think about it. They, they have an idea of how many are in the banks, digital digital dollars. But in terms of actual U.S. dollars, how many countries there are in the world, how many countries use the U.S. dollar, how many dollars have been lost or burned or <laughs> tucked under the mattresses? Like we have absolutely no idea how many dollars are out there. And that's what our entire world runs on. A currency where we have no idea how many dollars there are today and how many dollars there will be tomorrow. And when you live in that world, when you live in that financial system, it's impossible to do anything. So with Bitcoin, the flip side of that. So think about this. Think about a house. We measure that in U.S. dollars. OK, so with that, that's that we're comparing it to a, a currency or an asset. Where we have no idea how many dollars are out there. None. So if they printed one trillion or if they added another zero or three zeros to their balance sheet tomorrow, would that have any immediate impact on your house price? I don't know. What if they discovered a whole thing of uh, dollars in some country or whatever it is? Like the, the point here is that we have no idea how many dollars there are in the world. And that's what our entire world is based on. So when you're when you're measuring things in that currency, you can't really compare the two because we have no idea how many dollars there are out there. None. We can't even make a good a good bet of how many dollars are out there. So when you're trying to compare things to that, it's impossible. And so that's why I think that Bitcoin hasn't gone up in price. Even though we've seen Bitcoin go from $2 10 years ago to 70000 today, Bitcoin hasn't gone up in price. Everything has fallen compared to Bitcoin because Bitcoin is the first and the only asset in human history where we have a fixed amount of supply. The, the denominator in every value equation is set. It's fixed. We know how many there are today. We know how many there are going to be tomorrow. And we know how many there are going to be in 10 years from now. We can peg everything to that because we know how many there are. And so things aren't. Bitcoin's not going up in price. Everything is falling in comparison to Bitcoin. And so we think about this house, and I know we compare a lot of different assets, but let's let's use this house as an example. Two years ago when I bought it, let's say it was worth 300,000 bucks. How many Bitcoin was that? It was probably 100 Bitcoin. I think it was about 30,000 bucks for a Bitcoin. So let's say 100 Bitcoin. Today, this house would be worth about 
No, it's a hundred. That seems pretty high. Maybe 10 Bitcoin. 10 Bitcoin. Today, this house would be worth three Bitcoin or four Bitcoin. So when you, when you change your lens of how you value things in the world, instead of valuing everything in the US dollar, which is a completely, it's an illusion because we have no idea how many US dollars are out there. You cannot measure anything against the dollar. Everything has been just a complete illusion that they've told us. And think about how many inner workings there are with that. Every single country on earth is pegged. Essentially, it's the world reserve currency. So all these different currencies are based off of the US dollar. And so how would you go about tracking all those? Let's say that somebody in Ken the government in Kenya decided that they want to issue, you know, a trillion dollars worth of new money. How does that impact every other person on earth? It's just a complete mess. And everything. So with that, what would happen is the, the Kenyan dollar, whatever it's called, it would go down in value compared to the US. That makes sense. They print more money, their dollar becomes worth less. But what happens when the US dollar, when the US dollar is printed too much? You, Kenya is not going to call up Biden and say, hey, we're, uh, we're actually going to devalue your dollar a little bit here because you printed some money. So our Kenyan dollar is actually going to be more valuable today because you printed a bunch of money. It's not how it works. The US can do whatever they want. They extort all these different countries. There's so many inner workings there with country to country exchange rates and keeping all keeping track of all that is a complete nightmare. And that's that's the world we live in right now or we did. So imagine if you had one currency and everything is valued in that currency. Nothing ever changed. It doesn't matter what country you're in, country you're in. That's the world currency. And so when I when I started to think like that, that's where my whole life changed, my whole perspective in terms of where I want to be spending my time, what I what I choose to do, what I choose to think, and what I choose to, you know, every day in my life. What do I want to do? I don't want to live in that world anymore. I want to live in a world of Bitcoin. So your whole lens there, and I think that once that clicks with people, that the price of Bitcoin has not gone up. The price of Bitcoin has not gone up. It's just that everything is falling in comparison to Bitcoin because it's the only fixed asset that we have. And so you can actually value anything to Bitcoin because it's a fixed, that denominator there is fixed. And we've never had that before. And as more and more people realize that, as more and more companies realize that and as more and more countries realize that everything is just going to continue to fall faster and what we're going to see from our end of that is we're going to see the price of bitcoin going up but that's not what's happening there it's just that every single thing in the world is falling in comparison to bitcoin and i had to hear that about five or ten times myself before that really clicked in my head so and that this is a this is you know one thing that really stuck with me here is this exact quote actually is that bitcoin has no top because the fiat dollar has no bottom think about that that just basically sums up everything that i just said but you you have to understand it from that lens and then when you understand that everything in your life changes because you start doing things differently, you start thinking differently, and you start putting your energy and your time into different things. So with that, I didn't think that was going to take that long. We're 50 minutes into it here. But that was kind of the main point that I wanted to get across here to people. And I'm sure there's people who watch the show who have kind of put that in together in their head already. But if there's not, I want you to start measuring everything in your life in terms of Bitcoin, not fiat. So when you do that, when you start measuring things in Bitcoin, this is what I foresee happening. You know, we talk about the price of Bitcoin right now. It's $70,000, completely irrelevant, completely irrelevant. And so there's going to come a day where Bitcoin is going to be worth $100 million and one sat is going to equal $1. This is going to happen much faster than people think. 
But with that, that's kind of where we're already living. I'm living in that mindset. So I'm doing everything that I can to, you know, stay afloat, stay solvent, but also get as many sats as I possibly can and find ways to earn sats. And, do, you know, whether I have to do things in fiat and then convert it to Bitcoin, I want to get as many sats as possible because I'm not looking the fact that one sat is worth less than a penny. It's irrelevant because over time, regardless of what you or I do here, we can only accelerate things. The governments are doing a pretty good job of that themselves. But all we can do is that understand that everything is going to fall in comparison to Bitcoin. And as it falls, we're going to get $1 equals 100 sats. Or first, first milestone is going to be $1 here in Canada equals 1,000. And then $1 equals 100 sats. And then $1 equals $1 or 1 sat. And in that world, if you already put yourself in that mindset, Bitcoin becomes so much more valuable. And it is. That's that's the thing that we're missing. Everything's just lagging behind. Bitcoin is already that valuable. The network's there. The infrastructure's in place. The technology is there. Everything's already ready to go. We just have to wait for everybody else to show up. And as more and more people understand this and realize the fact that everything's falling in comparison to Bitcoin, that's what's going to happen. So in terms of that, then, you know, you can start doing things. And this is where we're going to talk about after this. The first part here is we're going to hop over to living in the future. And I got six things I want to talk about in terms of things you can implement into your life today. And really take a deep look inside and see what it is that you want. Do you want to continue working your job? Do you want to start your own business? What are you good at? You have to do some self-reflection, but I got six things I want to talk about that you can start doing today that's going to put you in that position to, you know, in that world of one sat equals one dollar. If you're already there, then you just have to wait for everybody else to catch up. <laughs> and it's something as stupid as, you know, playing going on the fountain, getting the fountain up and listening for 60 minutes a day, earning 60 sats, even though that's only worth like two cents today. If you just keep doing that every single day, every single month, every single year, when everybody else catches up and you've just been accruing as many sats as possible, think about the position you're going to be in. Think about the leverage you're going to have there. And that's why businesses, I mean, you know, going back to the King Golf stuff and how everything led here is that with King Golf, not only are we earning sats on some products, but a big part of this is the Bitcoin community from Noster. The Bitcoin community is, is so supportive in every sense of the world. And it's just a, a completely different society, I guess you'd say. It's everything within Bitcoin is basically our society flipped on its head. In the old world, everybody's backstabbing. Everybody's doing whatever they can to get ahead of the other person. It's a rat race. That's why they call it that. In Bitcoin, it seems like everybody's moving together. Everybody's building together. Everybody wants to support each other. And so we've essentially unlocked a, a brand new market in terms of Bitcoin. So we accept Bitcoin for our products, but that's just been a very small part of it. The, the amount of people that I've met through Bitcoin, through Noster, who have become King Golf customers and who have become good friends uh, in the online world, hope to meet them all in real life one day. But it's just a huge shift of, of your lens and your society. Everything just flips on its head. You can literally think about anything in the old world, whether that's the economy, whether that's the money, whether that's the communities. You literally flip everything on its head, and that's what Bitcoin is. And when you uncover that rock, you never go back to the old system. So I did want to give a couple of shout outs here today for businesses who are in Bitcoin. And if you're following along with this channel, you're going to hear a lot more of this. We, we want to be supporting businesses who are accepting Bitcoin. We want to get their word out, get their message out as far as we can. And so I want to give two shout outs today on the show. Number one is Gray Ridge Coffee, which is in this mug. My favorite is the Ridge Dark Blend. Uh, but you can go to the link. There's a link in the description. You can go to grayridge.coffee. That's their website. The link's in there too. But you can enter the code KNG King and save 25% off of your order. And I, I know that there's a lot of people in this community who have already ordered coffee 
And I've got a couple of emails from Chris at Gray Ridge um, thanking us. So grayridge.coffee, you get 25% off. The beans, it's a local company here in Canada. They roast all the beans here in my province. And he's a Bitcoiner. So if you're in the States, if you're in Canada, get some coffee. You can use the code KING, K-N-G, save 25% off. And you can pay in Bitcoin as well if you want to. So that's the first one. And the second one is juxtapose. So I ordered a t-shirt a couple weeks ago. I've been waiting for it to come in. Hasn't arrived yet. But I want you to check out his stuff. His websites, the info, information's also below. I think it's juxtapose. Uh, let me check here just so I don't mess it up. But he's got some great stuff on there. Juxtapose.store. That link is below as well. And I added something in there this morning because he gave us a discount code as well. So you can use the code 88 sats. You can save 10% on your order. And the reason why I didn't get 10% off my order when I did it online is because I paid with lightning. So essentially what he does there, instead of giving 10% off, he just gives free shipping. So I got a, a t-shirt for, I think 30 bucks or whatever that was in SAS, 30,000 SATs and free shipping on that. So if you're paying in Bitcoin, it's free shipping. If you're paying in fiat, you can use the code 88 sats and get 10% off. And I'm going to be doing some work with Eric. We're going to, I'm going to have some King golf themed t-shirts on his website. Um, just for fun. I love what he's doing over there. Go look at his website. It's very impressive. Uh, what's being built in Bitcoin and it's just very friendly on the eyes and he's got some cool stuff over there. So check out juxtapose.store. Two companies who are accepting Bitcoin and doing great things in Bitcoin. Uh, Craig says, remember that? Oh, okay. Yeah, I missed it there. Uh, so a couple a couple things over in Zap.Stream. Crypto Ethan says, Precoiners see Bitcoin as some imaginary magic internet money because of its digital nature. But it is, in fact, more real than fiat. It's way more real than fiat. Like I said, if you, if you can process that in your mind, that the price of Bitcoin is not going up, everything is just falling in compared to Bitcoin. And if you can understand the reason for that, the unlimited supply, and the unknown supply, you cannot measure anything against that. It's impossible. It's a complete illusion. So Craig also says, quote from Stack Hodler on Twitter, remember that the screen you're looking at right now is the most effective tool that governments have to sow fear, distract, and ob obfuscate. Well, I can't even say that. Obfuscate. Be wary of, any uh, be wary of anything that makes you fearful or pessimistic. Oh, that's so true. So true. There's just no time for it. There's no time to be, especially if you understand Bitcoin. If you're in Bitcoin, if you're living in Bitcoin, if you're earning in Bitcoin, there's absolutely nothing that you need to be worried about. As the video said yesterday, all news is good news for Bitcoin. And if you've been watching the show, I'm sure you can attest to that. I never talk about bad news for Bitcoin because everything that happens in the in the world, because of the the fixed, scarce, common denominator, uh, common denominator there, everything is good for Bitcoin, and it's just that people need to catch up to where we are today. So don't waste your time worrying about bullshit. Uh, Ballsy Golf says my local post office told me they will need my ID next time. That's for the Canada Post bull Bitcoin. Good information there. Classic government. Can't do anything right or on time. Joseph says, Bitcoin price has gone up. The distinction is Bitcoin was never manipulated in order for the price to go up. If it has no top, that means it continuously goes up. It'll go up forever. The, the price won't go up forever. Everything will fall comparison uh, compared to Bitcoin. Everything. And there was a guy on YouTube yesterday. He said, I agree with your theory here on the rent to home, but I don't agree that everything is going to fall. Everything's going to lose value compared to Bitcoin. Because he sees it as a currency. He sees it as an investment, like a, a tech stock. He, he's talking about comparing assets here. It's not. That's not what it is. Bitcoin is going to be the unit of measurement for everything that we do, every asset 
Every hour of our time is going to be valued in Bitcoin. There's nothing that is going to outperform Bitcoin because we're not, it's not performing anything. We're just measuring things in a fixed currency. And when that clicks in your head, everything changes for you. It did for me anyways. Uh, so I think that's it. <clears throat> I think that's all I want to talk about on here today. We're at about an hour. That's a good timing. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to jump over to living in the future. I see some faces in here who will be joining us. And I really want you to, I really want you to watch this one today. If you listen to this first hour and you got excited or you felt something inside of you saying, maybe this is something I should continue looking into. Maybe I should be earning sats instead of fiat. And the good news is, is you can actually take these next couple of years and do both. Earn fiat during the day, earn Bitcoin at night or on the weekends, whatever that is. But if you're somebody who thought that, I really want you to check out today because I'm going to talk about a couple things you can do, a couple ideas I have. And just, just watching this video today, I think hopefully will make a change in your life. And that's a big ask, I know. <laughs> a, a big claim, I guess you'd say. But I really believe that if, if, you, if you listen to the show today, and if you start thinking about things and you start interacting with the people who are in the living in the future chat, in the, in the signal chat, I really do believe that your life is going to change too. I, <clears throat> and it's already happening. It's already happening over there. Oh, I'll get you, I'll get you the link here. I think I can do it on zap.stream. But so anyways, the, the point of that is that you can join. It's free for seven days to join this. You can find the information in the description. Free for seven days. Then you sign up. It's five bucks a month. But you can cancel it. You can watch today's show. You can say, oh, Jor was just exaggerating. He was just talking bullshit. I'm not going to learn anything from this. I'm going to cancel. Do that. The people who are in there right now can attest to this with the... It'll be the best $5 you ever spend in your life if you want to start taking this stuff seriously. And we're coming to a bit of a crossroads here because we got just under 40 people. Once we get to 44 people, we're going to cut off that signal chat. Just because I don't want too much noise and chaos in there, I think that um, that's the best way to do it. So if you are somebody who watches the show every day, you want to give some support maybe, five bucks a month, plus you can be part of this amazing community. and part of that 44, there's going to be a pretty special, uh, it's called the 44 founders. And we're going to call them the visionaries once they fill up. But there's going to be some very few, uh, very special future perks for the people who are there. So that's what I would say today. I don't, uh, I don't ask too much. But I, I want you to if you're serious about this stuff, I want you to join. Free to do, seven days. You don't like it. It doesn't cost you a cent or a sat. Sorry, I'm just getting the link for Craig over in Zap.stream. Oh, I don't know what he's looking for there. So there's the, the show. And Phoenix Falconer actually posted the juxtapose store there. I'm going to zap him for that. Cheers, my friend. Thank you. Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything here. Because we covered a lot. I think we're good. I think we're good. Everything that Bitcoin touches turns to gold. And it's going to continue to. It's going to. So why not Why not be a part of this movement? I mean, you, you look, I saw a tweet today from Real Bedford. They won their soccer, their football, soccer championship two years in a row. They were shit before that. But all of a sudden they started talking about Bitcoin. Bitcoiners started showing up to their games. They started getting more revenue in. They can afford better players. They win two league championships in a row. Bitcoin. El Salvador, the most dangerous country on the planet a couple years ago. All of a sudden they, had, they embrace Bitcoin. They make it legal tender. 
They start talking about Bitcoin, buying Bitcoin. All of a sudden, they're the safest, most desirable place in, uh, what is it, Central America, I think. What's the common, den common denominator there? Why is that so hard for me to say? Bitcoin. Google. Did you see that Google set up their headquar uh, headquarters for El Salvador? The huge building, beautiful building. Why? Bitcoin. All this, all this stuff is possible if you're living in Bitcoin world instead of the fiat world. The the tent guy a couple weeks ago, the guy was living in the woods in a tent, <laughs> like a lot of people are right now, which isn't funny, but the interview was pretty funny. But he was living in a tent and he he bought some Bitcoin. It got up to five hundred thousand dollars, but he just had some Bitcoin and everything continued to fall while he was holding on to it. And so he went from living in a tent to buying a house. Why? Bitcoin. It's not going away. As much as certain people want it to go away, there's absolutely no way that can be stopped right now. And the best thing that we can do is embrace it. The best thing we can do is start building in Bitcoin and earning Bitcoin. And instead of just putting a thousand bucks or a couple thousand bucks into Bitcoin and hoping that, you know, you're going to be able to sell it in five years. That's, that's the old mindset. The new mindset is you buy it, you hold it forever, and you find ways to earn sats. That's how you get, you're going to change your life. So with that, Ryan, sorry. Good morning, my friend. Uh, Jose says, look at the market cap of NVIDIA. It's worth over 30 million Bitcoin. It, it's impossible. It's a joke. It's a complete joke. It, it's... <laughs> Uh, we can't get into that now because I'm trying to cut things off here. Um, flight about take off, but I'm about I'm a lift while I can. <laughs> Daniel is over and living in the future. Rob, good morning. Is that our friend from Bitcoin News, Rob? I don't know. I believe it might be. Anyways, Jose joined today. Look at that. There we go. I want I want to fill up the 44 spots today. So if you're watching this live. If you're watching this later, if you've been thinking about joining, today's the day, hump day. Hey, it is. Good to see you, Rob. We had some Bitcoin news on the show today. The one was the Hong Kong ETFs. Uh, but I appreciate you being here and for sponsoring this little wee show. Uh, Brendan was late, stuck in fiat land. Okay, so let's get out of here. Let's jump over there. I want to fill up the spots today, 44 spots. We're going to jump over. We're going to talk about earning Bitcoin, living in Bitcoin, and things you can do today in your life to start living in that world and being part of this community and this network. So if not, I, I get it, but I hope you do join us. Either if you're watching now and you jump over or you're watching this later on YouTube or on Spotify, Fountain, uh, hop over there and join. Phoenix Falconer just zapped 21 sats over on zap.stream ABB, which I'm thinking means always be bullish. So let's end on that. We're extremely bullish. We got so many opportunities right now in the world. We just have to find ones that we can take advantage of. And that's what we're doing. So have the best hump day of your life. Hopefully we'll see you over in living in the future. But if not, be calm, be cheerful, and have the best day of your life today. Because why wouldn't you? We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.